Hey everyone, it's Sam here from Sugar Spun Run, and today I'm showing you how to make a hummingbird cake. Hummingbird cake is a perfect springtime dessert. This easy layer cake is loaded with plenty of flavor, it's very moist, and it has a simple cream cheese frosting. Now to get started, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we are going to need bananas. So you'll need two cups of mashed bananas, and for me, that's usually about four bananas. If you can, you want them to be even more ripe than this because the riper they are, the browner they are, the more flavor you're going to have in your hummingbird cake. I am going to drop these bananas into a large bowl. I'm going to use a potato masher, and I'm just going to pulverize these bananas until they're completely mashed. Our bananas are looking pretty well mashed, so we're going to add our butter. You'll need 3 fourths cup of softened, unsalted butter. We'll also add 3 fourths cup of a neutral cooking oil, so this would be either a vegetable oil or a canola oil, and I like using canola. 1 cup of tightly packed light or dark brown sugar. You can use either light or dark. Dark is just going to make it a little bit more moist, a little bit more rich. And 1 half cup of granulated sugar. I'm going to use my electric hand mixer to cream together these ingredients until the butter is nicely creamed and everything is really well combined. Now with my mixer on low speed, I'm just going to stir in 2 large eggs. In addition to our mashed bananas, one very important key ingredient of hummingbird cake is crushed pineapple. We're going to use 8 ounces of crushed pineapple and you do not want to drain the juices before you add it. I'm also adding a tablespoon, yes a tablespoon, not a teaspoon, of vanilla extract. And at this point I'm pretty much done with my electric mixer so I'm just going to use a spatula to stir these together by hand. Set your wet ingredients aside and you're going to want to grab a separate large bowl for your dry ingredients. We're going to start with 3 cups of all-purpose flour. Add a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, and I'm also adding a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. This adds a really nice flavor to the hummingbird cake. I'm just going to use a whisk to stir these together until everything is really well combined. Now we're going to bring back our wet ingredients and we're going to add our dry ingredients to them. When our wet and dry ingredients are about halfway combined, the flour is about halfway absorbed, we are going to add some toasted nuts. I'm using one cup of chopped pecans, and I really do recommend toasting them if you can. It just really adds a nice extra flavor. So the reason we're adding them now rather than earlier or later is just because we don't want to overmix the batter. So by adding them when everything's about halfway combined, it just helps evenly incorporate the nuts without overbeating that batter. I'm just going to continue to stir everything until all of the flour has been absorbed and everything is combined, but again, don't overmix this. Now that our hummingbird cake batter is ready, we're going to want to transfer into our pans. I'm using 9 inch cake pans today. If you want to use 8 inch instead, I'll leave notes on how to do that and how long to cook it. So I've gone ahead and I've used a baking spray and to uh, lightly grease the sides of two 9 inch cake pans. If you don't have baking spray, you can just lightly grease and flour the sides instead. And I'm going to use a parchment paper round to line the bottom just to make sure the cake doesn't stick. Just divide the cake batter evenly between your two pans. Now we'll transfer our cakes to our 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven where they'll need to bake for about 35 minutes. You're going to want to cook them until they're a nice golden brown on top and a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean or preferably with a few moist crumbs. We're going to let our hummingbird cakes cool for about 10 minutes and then you'll want to take a knife and run this around the outside of the cake just to separate it from the pan just in case it's stuck any. And then we'll just invert this onto our cooling rack and let it cool completely before we frost it. While our cakes are cooling, we can go ahead and make our cream cheese frosting. I've shared this recipe before. It's super simple and it pairs really well with a nice moist hummingbird cake. The first thing you'll need is just one stick or half a cup of unsalted butter and you want this to be softened to room temperature. We'll add 8 ounces of softened cream cheese, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and just a fourth teaspoon of salt. You'll want to use an electric mixer to cream all of these ingredients together until they're nice and smooth. Now we'll add our sugar. You'll need 4 cups of powdered sugar for this cream cheese frosting. You'll want to make sure you add that gradually and stir with your mixer on a low speed. That way the sugar doesn't go flying everywhere. Just going to use my spatula just to make sure we got everything off the bottom of the bowl. If you're going for a naked style cake or if you want a thinner frosting, you can always beat in one or two tablespoons of heavy cream. That way you get a little bit of a thinner frosting. And now we are ready to assemble our hummingbird cake. We'll start with one cooled layer. I'm just going to top this off with some frosting. Now we'll add our second layer. And we'll top this one off with some frosting. 
And now for the sides, I'm just going to do a really light coating. We've got a nice, rustic looking, semi-naked finish. All right, all that's left to do now is dig into our hummingbird cake. I always like to wipe off my knife blade in between slices. It just helps keep the slices look a little bit neater. And that is how you make hummingbird cake at home. I really think you guys are going to love this moist, flavorful cake, perfect for springtime. And if you try it out, please let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you guys enjoyed watching today's hummingbird cake recipe, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, if you enjoyed watching, here's a few other recipes you might like as well.